Today is the last day of our special edition Green Chair Conversations Lent series. While I am sad to say goodbye to this series, I am really, really excited for some of the great people we have lined up over the next several weeks. For our last Lent-focused episode, which just so happens to be on Monday, Thursday, we sit down with Hope Church's Senior Associate Pastor, Eli Morris. Eli earned his Master's of Divinity degree from Memphis Theological Seminary and his Doctor of Ministry degree from Fuller Theological Seminary. Eli's concern for the poor has been a hallmark of his work here at Hope Church for over 30 years now. He serves on the boards of Streets Ministry, Oasis of Hope, and is the chaplain with the FBI Memphis Division. Eli also is the pastor of Hope Church's Sunday evening service, The Stirring. Eli is a born and raised Memphian with a massive heart and passion for the city of Memphis and most especially Tiger basketball. In this episode, Eli offers a candid look into Monday Thursday, what it is, why we observe it, and how we can learn from holy days like Monday Thursday. Eli also offers some reflections on what he personally has been challenged and encouraged on during this Lent season. So let's get to it and meet Pastor Eli Morris in The Green Chair. Eli, thank you for being here second time. No, third time in the green chair. Look at you. But first time in this studio. Do I get do I get it? Do you get a time. Re- Yeah, I guess I, I need it. Do you want you want to keep that mug? You can keep the coffee mug. <laughs> yeah. Okay, there you go. No, hey. I, I don't need another <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. Uh, I am excited to have you here. Really, I, I wanted our lens to be um, Monday, Thursday. Mm-hmm. Today is Monday, Thursday. Okay. And uh, I wanted us to kind of hear a little bit about that. You've been doing a service for a lot of years on, on Monday, Thursday. But yeah, we got to talk first about something we don't know about you. Oh, really? Yes. Nate, tell us something we don't know about you. You mean and, my... Go ahead. You mean my tattoo? Ah, that's good. That's pretty good, right? That's a good one. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you have a tattoo. Uh-huh. Do you not want to talk any more about your tattoo or you? <laughs> no, no, I'm happy to. Okay, tell I I love I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's it's a unicorn? No it's, <laughs> no, it's not a unicorn. Uh Okay, so I have one tattoo. Okay. And the, the history of it is, in fact, you were part of the I, event that I precipitated mm-hmm. the tattoo. Mhm. I'm a runner, yep, or kind of a runner. You are a runner, and I have recorded all my miles. People have run much farther than I, mm-hmm. but they don't have the paperwork. So I've recorded every mile in log books. I got forty something log books, and um, on the Friday after Thanksgiving a couple of years ago, I recorded my twenty four thousand nine hundred and first mile, mm-hmm. which is the circumference of the Earth. Mm-hmm. So uh, we, you know, we all went out to Audubon Park, and yes. Lindsay and I kind of ran that last couple miles together, and mm-hmm. there was a big party afterwards. Yeah, and we went to uh, Young Avenue for lunch. Yes. Yeah, and then Lindsay said, uh, "You ready for your tattoo?" And I said, "What?" She said, you, "You need a tattoo for that." And so um, we called around and went and got a tattoo on my on my right foot. Yeah, and so that's that's my. And that's it's just the foot. number, right? It's, it's just a- the number twenty twenty four thousand, comma nine oh one. Uh, it hurt because it was on the top of my foot. <laughs> so we got to we got to twenty four, and I almost said, "Hey, that's pretty good enough." <laughs> I'm a big fan of twenty four. So, so anyway, but uh, I got it. So it's still there. I haven't rubbed it off or anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good. That's my story. That's, that's pretty good though. Many people that's don't know about unique, that. Right? I don't know that you're ever preaching with flip flops on. So if I'm not I do, sure. I'm, I will. Uh, I'll have them show zoom, off your zoom, zoom in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so one of the questions I asked Rufus, and I, I want to ask you as well, mm-hmm. is uh, it is a little over a year we've been going through this pandemic, COVID, change, lots and lots of change. Uh, I wanted his perspective on kind of what he was seeing pastorally, mm-hmm. and I know you're doing the same thing. You're uh, doing funerals, weddings, all like you're in in it with with a lot of people. So I would love to hear what you're what you're seeing with people. It's really interesting. It's been a year, a little, a uh, little over a year now since we were diagnosed, Patty and I. Oh we're, wow! We 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 were tested on yeah. uh, March the March the twentieth, hmm. and uh, it came back positive. And so we, it's been a, been a year. It's been a incredibly unique year, mm-hmm. very difficult, 
here mm-hmm. in many, many ways. Uh, I have tried to contact everyone that I found out about that had mm-hmm. COVID out of hope, and so I've called um, 175, a couple hundred people, and we lost a few people mm-hmm. here. Um, and so it's just been hard. What I see right now, frankly, is I see a little bit of hope. Yeah. A little bit of hope that is that is mostly tied to the vaccine. Yeah. Where people are feeling like, okay, I have an opportunity now to do to really do something beyond wearing a mask and hiding in the house. Mm-hmm. I can do something here. And so I, I'm a, a little cautious hope. Mm-hmm. which is a good thing. Yeah. We need it. We need it desperately. Yeah. yeah. And not to mention weather's changing, all that nice stuff has been, it's, I think there's a part of that layer. Exactly. Too. Exactly. So I think we're at a better place. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as we ramp up these vaccines, um, we've got to get that totally figured out. But yeah. we seem to be moving in the right direction there. But mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. Yeah. So hope is a good thing. That is a good thing. It really is. And uh, so what I was thinking for our interview today, our mm-hmm. conversation was Monday, Thursday. So how, do you know how many years you've been doing a Monday Thursday service? That's, Ever a, since? Gr- that's a great question. The the, uh, the story started in 2001. Okay. And uh, my good friend uh, Shannon Eubank yeah. was the was the pastor that facilitated it, created it, mm-hmm. and facilitated facilitated it for the first six years or so. Yeah. And then I took it from there. Yeah. And um, this was his idea: Monday mm-hmm. Thursday uh, celebration or really remembrance, it's not yeah. really a celebration like Easter is, uh, was his idea. And it, he, he, he saw it as a gift to the greater um, mm-hmm. church community. That, uh, Easter was going to be a big deal and so on and so forth, but what was what could the stirring give that was unique to uh, to this this group? And so um, he came up with, with the Monday Thursday as being the option, which was a great one. That's really That's neat. Okay, so tell us a little bit about Monday Thursday. Like what is it? Why do we? Why? Why do we it's practice a weird, it's it? It's weird. A lot of people don't, don't have not had any experience with it. And you know, we actually were in a meeting once, uh, and somebody said, "Now tell me, what is Monday Thursday?" Right. Some people <laughs> said, "So you're having a service Monday through Thursday?" Yes. And I was, no, babe, it's Thursday. <laughs> Monday. Uh, Thursday. Monday Thursday. Monday is uh, is taken from the uh, Greek word mandatum, which which is. Uh, I'm sorry, a Latin word, and it, it means command. Mm. And it's it's about the commandment that Jesus gave that night at the Last Supper. Love one another. That's my commandment I leave with you is love one another. And so it is about that evening. It, uh, the two main elements of that evening uh, in most churches on a Monday, Thursday, are foot washing and the Lord's Supper. Mm-hmm. We've not really done foot washing here. <laughs> that would be an interesting... Uh, it would be a new concept. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've not done that in our Monday, Thursday, but we obviously do the Lord's Supper. And that this this uh, uh, this event, this this very sacred service, began in like the uh, in th- 393 AD. So churches have been doing it since then. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we decided that that might be a, a great opportunity for us. And it's it's a more it's a different service, you know. It, yes, I was going to ask it, about it's, that. Um, yeah. It's more contemplative. Mm-hmm. It's it's um, uh, more somber because of the mm-hmm. because of the events of that night, it's that way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about it. Uh, I mean, Monday Thursday the service uh, tonight is going to be uh, I'm, it's, I'm calling it clueless. Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of questions that surrounded that night. Yeah. Like the disciples said, "Where where where are we having this dinner?" Jesus had to explain that to them. Hmm. Uh, who's going to betray who? How's this work? Hmm. Um, uh, who's who's the greatest? It's another question they asked. Um, they said, um, you know, they, they just they were just they, they were a little clueless about yeah, this whole no, thing. Yeah. And so, you know, we're gonna we're gonna delve into that a little bit. But it's it's an interesting it's an interesting night, an interesting service, and we're gonna have a um, a powerful time, I think. And I think anytime you you have the Lord's Supper. There's power involved. I think so too, and you know it's interesting because it's a service that uh, it, it's a little bit somber. I mean, it's a very mm-hmm. it's not this you know Easter is this like what you were saying earlier is like Easter is this big celebration. It's super exciting. Um, I just love that uh, Monday Thursday leans into that kind of. There's a layer of Easter before we get to Easter. We get to the we have the cross. We have all of these events that happen were incredibly complicated and difficult. Right. Um, but but one of the things I was thinking through is you know Monday Thursday is 
it kind of is allows us a space to lament, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it it that's why it is so somber that night is is it kind of begins this whole entire trajectory of of leading to the cross. So I, I wanted you to talk a little bit about even that space as well of like what what lamenting. I mean, I think that's something we as a culture are not super good at. I mean, we've talked a lot about. Rufus was mentioning it, and he's very passionate about lamenting, and it, particularly with this COVID season, right? Like uh, wanting people to lean into like plans have changed, lives have changed. It's hard to lament. It's hard to grieve for a lot of us. And, and a lament is a deeper grief. Yes. Uh, you know, we, we're sad when certain things happen. We're sad our team lost the ball game. Mm -hmm. That's not lamenting. Lamenting, mm -hmm. in fact, there's some definitions of lament include a, a, a verbal m moaning and hmm. groaning and th that really takes it to another place uh, if you've ever been with someone or if you've ever experienced that sort of uh, deep sadness yourself you know exactly what I'm talking about but how do we groan if you will hmm. over whatever it is in our lives or in our space uh, or in our world that causes us that sort of, that sort of deep, deep pain, and uh, you know, you look at that night in the garden, where Jesus is 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 pleading with God, where it says he's he's sweating even drops mm -hmm. of blood himself, and so lamenting does tie itself mm -hmm. well to to a Monday experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was I was trying to think recently about that term. Rufus preached a great sermon on lamenting yeah, not too that. long ago. Um, you know, when I, I really lamented most recently, probably, was at the death of George Floyd. Hmm. I, I lamented not only for that family, but I, it was, I lamented for our country and kind of where we were, that we came to that spot. Of course, we were all very, yeah. we were in a lot of pain anyway because of COVID and other hmm. issues and kind of this heightened political thing. But his death uh, and some other subsequent deaths uh, and previous ones as well caused me to lament. Um, and I don't, I, you know, as, and, and the Southern culture does not really call for lamenting. Mm -hmm. We're a praise group. Mm -hmm. We're a happy group. Mm -hmm. We kind of are told growing up, you need to put that stuff aside. Don't, mm -hmm. don't, 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 don't cry. Mm -hmm. Don't, and uh, so sometimes we, we have a tough time figuring it out. Yeah. How do we, how do, what does it mean? How do I do that? Yeah. And we've got to, we got to train ourselves to be able to, mm -hmm. to understand some of that. Mm -hmm. How would you say, uh, and how would, how would you encourage people to lament in a healthy way? I mean, what would. Well, that's, the healthy way is very key. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Because it, it's, it's, it can become so destructive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if we live our life of lament. Yeah. Then, um. We don't, we, you know, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm. Uh, rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Those are biblical directives that we must follow. But I think the depth of joy is, um, is uh, uh, corresponds with kind of the depth of our lament. Yeah. I think we don't understand our full joy until we understand the, the greatest, the great pains that we have to go through. Mm. And, so for some, and so for some people, it takes a while. I mean, it takes a bit. Of, it takes some years. It takes mm -hmm. takes some real pain. I, it's hard. I think it's hard for young young people to lament too much now, unless there's this tragedy in their lives, like yeah. the death of a parent. Or, but but otherwise, uh, they got some, they they need a little more mileage. I think. Yeah. And so um, I, I just encourage people to understand and to look at for a moment some of the pains that they see in their life and in their world. And it's it's a little different than confession, you know, our own sin and all that. It's, I mean, we can lament our own sinful situation, but I think it's a little bigger, bigger than that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I like that because even part of this, um, you know, Lent series that we've been doing with mm -hmm. Green Chair and just the idea of Lent is to be having some fasting and in a sense of uh, underlying lamenting of something going on or kind of even giving up or practicing um, in order to get to Easter, in order to get to Resurrection Sunday. I mean, it makes that joy so much richer when you spend this time um, properly in a healthy way. Right. 
um, kind of giving up those things. So it's a, a great point, and it and that it does. It just that empty tomb is more vibrant yeah. in our souls yeah. when we have been uh, in the grave yeah. a little bit. Yeah, that's a good. That's a really good point. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things we've been doing for this Lent series, and today is our last conversation mm -hmm. in the Lent series. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things we've been doing is talking and focusing a lot on prayer, mm -hmm. and then also having uh, questions from people, which I have so loved doing. Okay, good. But first, I want to ask you a little bit about prayer, because we've gotten to hear different perspectives on unique practices to individuals' prayer lives. Uh, is there anything unique to how you pray, when you pray, what you pray? Is there anything unique to your, your prayer life? And I've, I've said this before in, in sermons and in different uh, venues. I, I, I'm, I'm not the, the, this, this classic prayer warrior that we have classic prayer yes. warriors here yes. that I know. In fact, there's a particular group of folk that pray mm -hmm. for pastors and and I have a person right now that and they'll they'll pray for me for two or three months and then it shifts over to somebody else and I'm giving them prayer requests mm -hmm. most particularly for my own personal life yeah. but not not so much uh, uh, business and church related mm -hmm. requests although there are some but you know pray for my family pray for this pray for mm -hmm. that pray for our time away pray for this um, and so, but I'm not one of those people. I'm not great at that. Mm -hmm. It's a real gift attached to that. But but the idea of, of prayer is 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 a, needs to be a common one. Yes. For all of us, I have always been so inspired by that passage that says pray without ceasing yes. and what that might mean mm -hmm. and what it means to me has historically been keep the line open so that all day long that line between you and God is open so that. You're, you're listening for him and he's hearing you in every aspect of everything you do. And so I, I, it's not that I have to pull over in the car, shut the car off and, and pray because I'm in this attitude of, maybe not an attitude of prayer, but this uh, recognition mm. of communication all day long. Hmm. I will say this, this was really interesting to me. When we got sick, I uh, eventually was able to get, get a little more uh, activity in my life and begin to to walk a little bit and then to eventually to run again. Mm -hmm. And of course, the whole city was shut down at that time because it was so early in the pandemic. So there was nothing else going on. So I, I ran every single day. Hmm. And so I would uh, pray during my run. And hmm. I, I've prayed during my runs um, in the past, but this there was something about hmm. the timing of that and my ability to be out for 30, 40 minutes on a run. And prayed. I prayed. I prayed for every member of my family. I prayed for you. I prayed for <laughs> everybody. Mm. And that was really a very special time. Now, mm -hmm. uh, life has changed a little bit. I'm not able to run as much right now. But now I run more and pray more, <laughs> and which is really an interesting thing. I, I'd not really done that in those, you know, twenty five thousand or so miles that yeah. much. Some people yeah. that's what they do, but yeah. I had not. So it's kind of new to me. That's really neat. So mm -hmm. you kind of picked up this new prayer practice, essentially, exactly. through exactly. COVID. Yeah. Exactly. That's really, really yeah. neat. Yeah. Okay, so um, the other question I had with you um, is particularly when you have conversations with people or mm -hmm. what you're hearing as well, uh, where do you see people struggling with prayer the most? I think, pe I think people are, are, don't exactly know what to say. Mm -hmm. And I think people are, need to be certain that God is hearing them. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, uh, you know, in, in regard to what to say, I think sometimes we've developed some bad uh, habits uh, or, or expectations based upon these beautiful prayers that we hear other people give. And, and, and we decide we can't do that. We don't mm -hmm. know what to do. And I always tell them, hey, listen, just, just talk to God. Just say, mm -hmm. say it any way you want to say it. Yeah. Um, he understands. He knows your heart anyway. You don't even have to, but it's good for you. Mm -hmm. But um, just just be as simple as you can be. Hmm. When you're angry with God, be very clear about it. Hmm. Uh, when you're happy, um, when you're thankful. And so I, I just tell people to try to learn how to talk to God reverently, certainly, yeah. in awe, certainly, mm -hmm. but as you would talk to other people. Yeah. And honestly, it sounds like you're saying very frankly. Honestly, yeah, that's very usually honestly. my biggest thing is I'll encourage people just to be as brutally honest as they as they can because I think sometimes there's this like hang up with people feeling like I can't I can't tell God that I'm mad with God I can't tell God that I don't want to talk to God or right. I can't tell God that I want nothing to do with God right now and I think there's something 
powerful about being able to say that in your prayers to God. Exactly. Um, and, and so I always am encouraging and leading people into that. The other, the other part about people not feeling that God hears them, that one's a little, that one's more complicated because I, I can't tell people how to feel. I can't yes. make people feel some sort of way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can try to assure them that, that, that uh, God does in fact hear, but that one's a little more complicated. Mm-hmm. And so, um, and I, I don't, I don't know why they don't feel that. Maybe they feel like they've been praying for the same thing for a long time and there's been no mm-hmm. quote answer. Uh, and what that basically means is it's, they've not received the answer that they have wanted. Hmm. Yeah. Um, and and this whole idea of feelings is is um, good and bad all at the same time. Yeah, that I comes mean, up a lot in yeah. the conversations I have as well. Yeah. yeah, I don't feel anything different. I don't feel like God hears me. I don't feel like it's making that much of a difference. God already knows anyway. Right. You know, I right. think there's layers of that too. Right. But I I would argue that it's it's beyond that feeling. Right. It's beyond prayers. Beyond beyond just feeling like I'm connected with God or feeling like. I think it's part of um, it's part of building that connection, right? And I, I think we also need to see prayer for what it is. It is a spiritual discipline, and discipline requires us doing mm-hmm. some things when we're not particularly mm-hmm. uh, drawn to do it. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so, therefore, uh, whether it be scripture, whether it be meditation, whether it be uh, a community, that those are disciplines that we need to pay some attention to, even mm-hmm. if they're not something we really want to. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like exercising. Yeah, yeah. I was actually just thinking it's like uh, Tommy and I when we have a date night. Like there's sometimes we have a date night mm-hmm. and it is great and we're communicating and we're encouraging each other and having just like a great time. We're laughing. And there's sometimes we have a date night and we're arguing or there's sometimes we have a date night and we're so distracted and blitzed we can't even talk. Exactly. You know? And I think, the, but the important piece is that we're continuing to have that time together. Exactly. You know, so. Right, yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Um, okay, so I want to ask... Prayer as date night. Is that what we're... <laughs> prayer as date night. I like that. Okay. I like that too. <laughs> uh, so one of the questions from our congregation, I want to ask you mm-hmm. uh, from, from our people is, I really love this one. Um, do you have any tips or tricks to helping your prayer stay on track? Um, it says, what are some things to help focus on in prayer to stay on track? Um, I'm hearing a lot about people feeling like they're praying and then it's like rabbit trails here and there. How, is there any... Trip, tips or tricks uh-huh. you have for that? Well, I think a couple things that I think of. I, I love I love uh, writing things down. I like journaling, and sometimes that's a nice thing to do. I've got some very sweet little uh, notes from my mother. My mother mm. journaled, mm. and so and all she did was she'd get a little calendar. You know, you'd get calendars from the insurance company every year, and they would be a day timer kind of thing. And she wouldn't even use the calendar so much. She just used the paper to write these names of people that she was praying for. Oh, wow. It was really, really sweet. It's a very wow. precious thing for me to have. Yeah. Um, and so that that c- can help some people. Some people just do better with that. Mm-hmm. Another thing, I think, is to be careful when, when you're going to pray. I mean, if, if the last thing you do before you fall asleep is pray, then you fall asleep praying, probably. <laughs> uh, and so that's probably not the greatest time. Maybe... Before bed is not a bad time, but I think I would try to find, you know, like I said, my stuff is kind of wide open. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't concentrate that much on the times. But if you're a person who needs to concentrate on time, I think it'd be a great idea to do it when you know you're at your best. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, you know, I, I, I'm not my best after lunch. I'm sleepy. Yeah. And so yeah. maybe in the morning, mornings yeah. are great for me. Sometimes yeah. mid morning. I take a moment to do that, and it's that's a good time. I think we got to think of those those mm-hmm. sorts of things through. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I like that a mm-hmm. lot. Um, okay, so last question for you is: uh, I find myself stuck in my prayers, um, like I'm not able to get out of doing the same things over and over, and the same few prayers over and over again. So, any any ideas with that? Um, almost like being it's almost the opposite, right? Of being too yeah. too regimented, too um, saying, "Hey, God, thank you for today." Whatever it is, just the same things over and over again. Um, there are different things to do. I mean, yeah, we had a we had a dear uh, lady come to the stirring one night to speak to us about prayer, prayer in colors, what she what she calls it. Hmm. And she she just she draws. She and she's not an artist really. I mean, hmm. she just doodles while mm-hmm. she's 
while she prays and she'll draw whatever. It's not that she's drawing what she's praying about, but she's doing that and as an act of worship and, and kind of to concentrate on her prayer time, which was interesting to me. I think, um, uh, I, I think we do get, we do get distracted and I, I think that that's just, that's just a natural part mm-hmm. of, who, of who we are. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'll tell you what I have enjoyed doing. I, I uh, read a prayer in a sermon not too long ago. I loved that. And, and some people that grew up in a, in a tradition that, that, that it's not, reading, reading a prayer is not right. They shouldn't mm-hmm. do it. Man, I have really been blessed by other people's mm. prayers. Mm. And so perhaps you can find uh, online some you can prayers. Google that. Yeah, yeah, some prayers that really speak to you. And maybe if you're stuck, you, you, you let those words be your words that mm. day. And um, and I think I think that's a great way mm. to kind of get out of a rut. I think so too. Is to find uh, prayers that really speak to you from some other mm. some other source. You know, some of them are ancient prayers. Some of them are very very contemporary prayers. Mm. You know, it, Heather Strongmore when she mm-hmm. was here in the Green Chair, she was talking about how she fell in love with liturgy. She fell in love with the right. Anglican Church because. Uh, she didn't feel like she had the words for certain things because she was going through a lamenting morning season in her, in her life, and so she found that as such a beautiful thing is that I don't have to, I don't have to know what to say, but I can pray this prayer that's already that. done. And she just fell in love with that, and I think that's such a beautiful reminder. Is what you're saying is look to those those things. We have sources like that. We have we have Psalms. You know, we have the Book of Psalms. It's just prayers and prayers and prayers. Very real, honest prayers. You know, I, I think some of it does have to do with where we, where we've come from, some of our some of our traditions. Mm-hmm. I know some people that have come from a high liturgy church. They'll come visit Hope and they'll go, mm, "Man, this is not really church. I don't know what's <laughs> going on over here. But I, 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 this is not. Yeah, I, it ain't getting me." And and, and you know, uh, and yet they'll look down the down the aisle and they'll see somebody weeping mm-hmm. in church. It throws them off a little bit. But in the same way, I have gone to a very high church uh, experience where they're reading from a prayer book, they're reading a liturgy, and it, it's so different from what I'm used to. But I'll look down, somebody's crying over the liturgy too. Mm. I mean, God speaks to us in different ways, and mm. I think we need to be open okay. to, um, to, to, to hearing what God has to say from another tradition. And I think it's super helpful. That's great. That's really great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any final thoughts, any final reminders for us? The last Lent series, we've got Monday, Thursday, later today. I know I would encourage people to attend or watch, but anything else in in regards to what we've we've been talking about? I would say let's live in these days, this this Monday, Thursday, uh, Good Friday, the celebration of the weekend. Let's 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 live in them. Let's really mm. absorb them this year. Sometimes it becomes so trite. Yep. Uh, these high holy days because we've just done them for so so long. We've gone. It's it's a little frantic perhaps. Um, but I, I say let's let's live in them these few days. Let's pay some attention to what really happened and what that means to what that means to us. And part of this whole idea of being hopeful, we're at a more hopeful place, perhaps, mm-hmm. as a culture and in our own lives. Um, let's see what's next, you know? What happens What happens after the resurrection? Uh, because that's fascinating to me. That The whole idea of what happens after the resurrection yes. is amazing. Yes. The resurrection is amazing, but, but what God did to, to grow his church mm-hmm. and to bring us to this day is amazing. It's that, unbelievable. But that's all, a nice little unintentional plug for our sermon series that we're getting ready to do. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're exactly right. <laughs> well, what well, exactly, we've been talking but about think, it. But I wasn't yeah. thinking about that, but it's very true. Yes. You know, that you know that fourth day is a huge deal. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about that in these meetings. I mean, the reason we're doing it is because we're having these kinds of conversations about being enamored with that and saying we we really want to lean into those spaces and it really is unique and it really is kind of wonderful what happens after that. Yeah. So, there you go. Well, blessed Monday and happy Easter to you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. This is, this is a huge honor. Third time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. You get All your right. coffee mug. I, I'm good. Good. <laughs> and I, I'll, I'll see you tonight. At the yes, you'll see me. You'll see me tonight. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Mm-hmm.
And that is a wrap for our Green Chair Conversation with Pastor Eli Morris. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Remember, today's conversation doesn't have to end here. I would love to connect with you and hear your thoughts about today's conversation or even topics or people you want to hear from. So feel free to send me an email. Also, we would love for you to take a moment and encourage someone today by sharing this conversation with a friend. You can also watch any previous conversations at hopechurchmemphis.com slash GCC or on YouTube, as well as listen on any podcast apps. We love you guys and I'll see you next week.